Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. While there are so many things we miss, while we are not able to gather in person, we meet this way knowing that God is still at work, binding us together through his Spirit. Let us worship God. When Jesus speaks, our hearts burn within us. Our eyes are opened when he breaks the bread. Let us pray. O oh God, you are light of the hearts that know you, life of the souls that love you, and strength of the thoughts that seek you. Guide us by your word and spirit that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is a reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, beginning at verse 13 and reading through verse 35. It begins on the afternoon of Jesus' resurrection. Listen for God's word. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there these in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are times when events become all-consuming. The last few weeks have been like that as we move through the COVID-19 pandemic. Conversations have been about little else. Whether it is speaking through a mask to a coworker or a stranger in a grocery line, or speaking face-to-face -face with the few people in our circle of isolation, or to others in a Zoom call or through a text, these conversations analyze the latest news, review recommended practices, or share personal anecdotes about living life with physical distancing, working from home, going to school from online, or sharing where someone was able to find and buy hand sanitizer. All conversations seem to be about life in the midst of pandemic. These conversations can become overwhelming 
but it, is also, it also helps us process and figure out this thing for which we have no easily relatable experience. This is what Cleopas and his traveling companion are doing as they make their way to Emmaus, talking about and trying to make sense of all that has happened in recent days. They went to Jerusalem for Passover, the festival celebrating and remembering God's freeing the Hebrew people from slavery. This usually wonderful time turns to a time of horror. Jesus, the one they followed, the one in whom they had placed such hope and trust, is arrested, beaten, and crucified. With his death, everything has changed for these two disciples. The events of the last several days weigh heavily upon them. There is a lot to process, including the news from this morning that some of the women of their group had been to the tomb and found it empty. They saw angels who told them that Jesus is alive, but when some of the others went to the tomb, they did not see him. The grief they are carrying has lined the faces and slumped the shoulders of these two travelers, but their voices are passionate. The word used to describe the conversation between Cleopas and his partner reveals that their words are intense. They have no, no more information than they did when they left Jerusalem, but even now, well into the afternoon, they still cannot stop talking about it, and in continuing to talk about it, Maybe some new insight will come to them. The two finally realize that someone else has started walking with them, and they come to a stop as they hear his question. What are you talking about? It is not only the unexpectedness of his presence, walking up without them realizing it. His question brings them to a stop because it seems impossible that someone would not have heard what has happened to Jesus. And so they tell him about what has taken place in Jerusalem in the last few days. Amazingly, it is the stranger who only a moment ago seemed oblivious to recent events, who now gives them what they had been seeking throughout their conversation, new understanding and a framework to interpret recent events. Scripture is the framework Jesus gives them. Cleopas and his companion know Scripture, but Jesus opens the scriptures for them in a new way. They do not yet recognize him, but will later, as Jesus, they will recognize him, but will later realize Jesus is using scripture to more fully reveal himself. The disciples arrive at their destination, and seeing Jesus begin to travel on, they urge him to stay with him with them. Hospitality in such an environment is necessary for safety and survival. Torah, the law under which these disciples live, expects hospitality to be offered to a stranger. But is there more here? Have the embers of their hearts, which will soon blaze and burn, already produced enough heat that they cannot bear to see him leave without hearing more of what this stranger has to say? Perhaps they are like students who finally understand a difficult theory and now want to explore its nuances and depths. If the stranger will stay, they will have an opportunity to do so. Jesus accepts their invitation, but there is no more conversation about Scripture. In the next part of the story, they are sharing a meal. We do not know whose home this is. It may be the home of Cleopas and his companion. It may be the home of a friend or a relative where they are staying on the way to their own home, so there may be others at this meal. The one person who is definitely the guest is Jesus. But it is Jesus who picks up the bread, blesses and breaks it and gives it to them. While the disciples were on the road with Jesus, we are told they are kept from recognizing him. As they witness this familiar scene, the familiar actions, God clears their vision, vision and they recognize Jesus. Why were they kept from recognizing Jesus in the beginning? Perhaps in their joy, once they found he was alive, they would not have listened as attentively to what he is saying. Or is it to make a more solid connection to seeing Jesus through word and sacrament? Or is it to give the disciples an opportunity to offer hospitality to Jesus? Jesus made himself available to the, to the weary and grieving disciples while they were on the road. But when they reached Emmaus, he was willing to walk on. 
unless he was invited to come in. Hospitality is offered and accepted. Genuine hospitality involves making a space for someone else. It may be a literal moving of the placemats to make space at the table, but hospitality also necessitates making a space in our lives to allow another in. Priest and writer Henri Nouwen wrote that, I have many memories of people who have made my heart burn, but I did not invite them in. Sometimes it happens on a long plane trip, sometimes in a train, sometimes at a party. It is one of the characteristics of our contemporary society that encounters, good as they may be, don't become deep relationships. This life of ours, filled with good advice, helpful ideas, wonderful perspectives, they are simply added to the many other ideas and perspectives, and so leave us uncommitted. In a society with such an informational overload, even the most significant encounters can be reduced to something interesting among many other interesting encounters, among many other interesting things. Only with an invitation to come and stay can an interesting encounter develop into a transforming relationship. Jesus' actions and words at the table stir remembrance of the last meal with his disciples when he gave them the gift of himself and the bread and wine. Jesus' words and actions also stir remembrance of when he fed the multitudes, taking the five loaves and two fish. Jesus blessed and broke them and then gave them to the disciples to serve the people. The story of the feeding of the multitudes comes immediately after the disciples have been sent out on their own to do the same work Jesus is doing, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God and to heal. Hospitality has always been a part of Jesus' ministry. As he invited all sorts of people to come and follow him and to eat with him, when Jesus' disciples extend hospitality to others, Jesus is seen. In the breaking of bread, Jesus is recognized, and the disciples immediately return to Jerusalem to share this good news with others. Churches will often describe themselves as welcoming, but true hospitality does more than welcome someone at the door. It invites them in and makes a space for that person in the life of the congregation beyond filling an empty seat in the pew. Author Anne Lamott is frank about her struggles, including struggling with addiction and, of her and also her curiosity about God and faith and coming to church. She writes, I went back to St. Andrew about once a month no one ever tried to con me into sitting down or staying, and I always left before the sermon. I loved singing, even about Jesus. I just didn't want to be preached at about him. The church smelled wonderful, like the air had nourishment in it, or like it was composed of these people's exhalations of warmth and faith and peace. As part of these people, even though I stayed in the doorway, I did not recognize my voice or know where it was coming from, but sometimes I felt like I could sing forever. Eventually, a few months after I started coming, I took a seat in one of the folding chairs off by myself. Then the singing enveloped me. Here was no sense of performance or judgment, only that the music was breath and food. Something inside me that was rigid and rotting would feel soft and tender. I felt bigger than myself, like I was being taken care of, tricked into coming back to life. This congregation offered hospitality by offering her the space that she needed to come in. To ex extend true hospitality often means we adapt. Instead of offering what we think the other person needs, we instead recognize what will meet their need and offer that. And this is the way God comes to, to us, offering us what we need, grace and acceptance.
in this time of pandemic. There are many changes in the way that we are doing things. Yet there are also some beautiful adaptations. Neighbors who may not have even known one another's names now gather in the evening on balconies to share a song or in individual driveways to share a conversation. Encouraging messages are chalked on sidewalks. Posters and stuffed animals are placed in windows. Extra food is bought, not to be hoarded, but to be sent to food pantries to feed storm victims and the newly unemployed. Hospitality at its core means to care for one another. In both the offering and receiving of hospitality, God is present. The hospitality we show to others is based on the hospitality God has shown in Jesus. In the risen Christ, we recognize that hospitality that we have received and can say with the disciples, Are not our hearts burning within us? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all times and places, We cannot stop talking about the painful events we have witnessed this week. We are discussing the numbers of people killed by COVID-19. We speak constantly of the suffering of of people brought on by this pandemic. We talk about the economic, physical, mental, spiritual, and psychological distress being felt all over the globe. We debate the merits and risk of reopening our country. We cannot turn away from the anxiety that feels ever-present. We know you hear our voices and our supplications. We give thanks that you do not leave us alone. As the risen Christ comes alongside us now, we pour out our hearts, unashamed to share exactly how we feel in this moment. We rest in your sure presence as we share with you our thoughts and worries and hopes and doubts. God of all times and places, tell us again the story of salvation. Remind us how you rescued us from Egypt and sustained us in the wilderness. Help us to remember that you were with us in the exile and made a way to bring us home. Bring to our minds the countless times that you have not allowed the storms of life to overtake us. We know you hear us and give thanks that you do not leave us alone. As the risen Christ comes, We urge him not to leave, but instead to stay with us. Let his presence especially be felt by those who are working so hard to care for others. Send us to those places in deepest need of knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. We pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Go into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you in your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen.